In today's guide, I'm going to be showing you guys just how to set up a quick scene after you've done your modeling and applying artwork. So the two models I'm going to be using today are the Red Knight Vodka Box and the Red Knight uh, Vodka Bottle. I'm just going to pull both of these out of my model library, and then we're going to set up the scene uh, with some background, special effects, and uh, set up some camera angles as well. So there's our scene, and first things first, I want both of these objects to be on the same floor. Uh, so I'm going to use my transform window, and I'm just going to set ground for both of them. That option is going to allow me to uh, basically have both of my models on the same plane. Uh, so when I do things like uh, head over to the special effects menu, and from here I'm going to turn on some shadows. Uh, as you can see, this allows the shadows to uh, be on the same floor so nothing's floating around. So the next thing I want to do is let's just handle the background. I'm going to head to the background tab. And just so you guys know, if you need any of the windows that I'm accessing here, all you have to do is find these up in Window, and then you open up the window that you need. Um, in this case, I'm using Backgrounds. So the Backgrounds tool, uh, if we did want a dynamic background, which is an image background, um, we could add that. In this case, I'm just doing a, a photo studio. <clears throat> so let's just click the white I've got this under saved color set but just so you guys know you can double click the top and bottom and that'll allow you to uh, just kind of select a color and what's really cool in this colors is the pick screen color where you can kind of just pick another color in the scene if you ever wanted to uh, save custom colors or anything else like that super helpful if you are looking for a very specific color in this case I'm going to stick with the white into the white and let's set up our uh, our actual lighting now. Now with the lighting, I do want to be inside of our ray tracer. Uh, now if you're not using the ray tracer, of course, be in this view here, but for everything else, I like to use the ray tracer as it's just going to look better. It's kind of that photorealistic uh, lighting rig. Now once this generates up, we can go ahead and see the preview of what our model is going to look like, and then we're just going to change the lighting editor together. Now. I'm, I, I don't mind the default lighting. Uh, it's actually a pretty good rig. It has some nice solid lights and it gives some nice variable shadows. But the one thing I do want to change is um, the background. I'm not the biggest fan of just the regular gradient. I want a couple of different things in here. Uh, now one thing too, as, I'm, as it renders in, you're gonna notice that my box isn't as, uh, as nice as it should be. I think I'm going to change the material on that. So all we got to do is open up that box, and this is going to be the front material. And yeah, it looks like it's just a very shiny box. So I'm going to drop the refraction down, and I'm going to add a little bit of roughness. Uh, what that's going to do is going to uh, drop the shine, and it's going to add the roughness, which is going to diffuse that shine even more, giving me more of a matte box. That's kind of what I'm looking for. That's perfect. Now back to the lighting here, we're going to go ahead and switch out the background. I'm going to keep the lights as is, as again, I, I don't mind them at all. And I'm going to head over to background. And instead of using a uh, flat gradient color, I'm going to click spherical image. Um, now the one I have that I like to use is the peppermint power plant. As this is going to offer just some extra color, a little bit of variability to the lighting itself. And in the reflections, it has just a little bit more of a, you know, things to reflect instead of just some solid colors. Uh, so from here, I am going to then drop down my blur, get it a little crisper. And a cool technique that I've used in the past to get rid of the color in the background, it's going to be going into your saturation. And if you just drop the saturation all the way, you're going to see that the color gets removed from the scene. Uh, just a nice way of getting it back to a black and white kind of scene. Now from here, I am going to change one more thing, and it looks like my label, that front label there, isn't really set up, so it looks like it's set up as a liquid. Uh, must have changed that by accident, so we can just go ahead and switch this back over to paper. Well, in this case, it's kind of a transparent stick label, so I'm going to make this a uh, plastic, and I'm going to make it completely transparent. And that'll fix up my label there so it doesn't look as uh, blocky.
All right, excellent. That's looking great. Now, the last thing I want to do, and again, it's going to be in the materials as well, as you know, once you're at the ray tracing stage, you do want to look towards your materials while you're editing the lighting, because uh, they just go kind of hand in hand. The next thing is just the cap. I'm not a big fan of how reflective it is, so I just want to drop that reflectivity. And to do this, we're just going to open up the material editor for it, and uh, right now it's set up as a metal. And in metal, you can't use any refraction. So we're going to have to rely solely on roughness. So that's what we're going to do here. We're going to go ahead and just grab the roughness and crank it up a bit. And that's just going to give the cap a little more of a matte kind of pattern there. That looks much better. Excellent. So I'm loving the view. It's not looking too bad. And in fact, I might even want to go ahead and add another light to the scene. And this light, instead of being white, I'm going to make this a black, darker light for a little bit of contrast. And I'm just going to make it a little taller and much bigger. And then from there, and just so you guys know, the middle of the lighting rig is the back side. So right now I'm uh, shining a black light onto the back half. Uh, if you wanted to shove this over to the front, that would be the area cut in half here. Uh, so I'm just adding a little bit of variable shadowing here. And just add a little, actually I want that a little lower down, right about here. All right, that looks good. Okay, and then from there, once you're ready to go with your lighting, I'm going to hit pause on this. I'm just going to swap the views back. And now what I like to do is I like to set up my camera angles. So camera angles, you know, what am I actually exporting? If it's just a standard shot like this, we can skip this step. But if we do want to do multiple shots, which normally we do, um, we're going to go ahead and head over to our camera option. So that's up here at the top. The camera option is going to allow us to tie in any kind of angle that we'd like. Uh, so in this case, I kind of want a little zoomed out. And I'm just going to angle it so it's more of like a top left shot. So like so. And then I'm going to save this as a preset. Uh, so if I hit save here, I can save this as red night angle one. And I'm just going to copy this to make it a little quicker. And then from there, I'm going to add one more. And this one's going to be a little more straight on. So I'm going to go ahead and just zip this over and zoom in a bit more as well. Perfect. And then we're going to save this as angle two. So there's our two camera angles we want to export out. And of course, if we wanted to save any more, we could do that. Um, we also have the ray tracing options, which is kind of fun. But for this shot, I don't, I don't really want to mess around with that. So from here, we've set up our scene and we're ready to uh, just take one more look at the ray tracer. Make sure everything's looking good. And yeah, that's, that's looking just fine. Now, actually, maybe one thing, I could go into the vodka, and uh, if you lower the refraction a little bit, you're going to get less uh, kind of play around in the glass there, so less bounce of the light. And then I'm going to go into the clear as well, and drop the refraction too to make it a little crisper. There we go, as you can see, that kind of helps eliminate some of that movement in there, except our bottom looks very shiny. Uh, so let's just go ahead and just drop that a little bit more. Take a look at that, there we go. That's looking better. Excellent. And then from there, we're ready to export this out. So let's go over to File, Export, High Res Image. And once you're here, we've got the width. I'm going to set this to a normal 5,000. It's just kind of my default. Makes it a nice large image so you can zoom in. And we're going to leave the export channel alone. We're rendering at our ray tracer. And since I'm using my GPU options, I'm going to set this to around 128, 264. If you're using the CPU, you can pop this up to 1024. But again, GPU option cuts it down a little bit. So 128 is going to be fine. And then from here for the camera presets, we're going to use the preset list. And a little arrow indicates that we got to click this little list button. We're going to deselect everything that's currently selected. And we're just going to find our two angles. Excellent. And hit OK. And from there, that is it. Let's hit export. And what this menu will open, um, it'll basically ask you, hey, do you want to save it somewhere? But since we're using the ray tracer, this is going to always save it into my render manager. Uh, so you can just kind of hide the folders and just give it a quick name. 
So I'm going to call this Red Knight Vodka. Excellent. And then from there I hit save and this does the rest. Now if you do have the render manager open, this will start rendering immediately once it pags in. Uh, but again, if you don't have your render manager set up, you can always check out our other video on the channel and that's you know how to set it up and that'll get you started with the next step. But I just wanted to show you guys a little bit on how to set up a scene, how do I change things and maneuver around the scene and what does it look like. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for joining me, Adam Chop, as uh, we looked around a quick little set up the scene kind of task in IC3D. I uh, hope you guys have a great rest of your week and look forward to our next video.